Greetings! It is I, Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Brother Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion on the Pathfinder role-playing game system. All right. When we last left off, we started discussing cursed items. Now, a cursed item can be identified in any of the same ways that a normal magic item can be identified. The only exception is whether you identify if it has the curse or not. If you're attempting to identify an item and find out if it's cursed, you must exceed the DC of whatever it was required to identify the item by 10. If you do not, you do not identify that it is cursed. You identify it as the item that it was intended to be, whatever item it would have been if it wasn't cursed. If you do exceed by that 10, you do notice it's cursed. If you know the item is cursed before you attempt to identify it, rather than just be like, what's this item? Is it a normal item? Is it a cursed item? I don't know. If it's, oh, there's a cursed sword right there. It's just the standard DC to identify. Now, there are some cursed items I can just discard. It's done with it. There are others that are harder to get rid of. Some cursed items have a compulsion that once you have it, you have to keep it in your possession. You can't just break this compulsion no matter what. Others, regardless if you discard them or not, reappear in your possession all of a sudden. You just can't get rid of them. For these latter two, you can theoretically get rid of them if you use a remove curse spell. You would have to, or a similar spell, you'd have to cast it and succeed on your caster level check, but the DC would be 10 plus the caster level of the cursed item. If you succeed at this, well, I could toss it away. I don't have the compulsion. It won't return to me. The problem is I have a single round before the curse reasserts itself and then it doesn't work anymore. So I have one chance to go Hwah! and get rid of it. Now there are a number of common effects that a cursed item can have. Really, these are just the basic ones that are li they're listed in the book. But technically, you could have any effect you want as the GM for it to have for what whatever you want you can give your players it's entirely up to you what you feel is appropriate for this cursed item that is being formed what it will do let's go over some of the common ones though delusion a delusion magic item makes whoever's using it believe that it's whatever magic item it should be if they believe it's a plus one sword they will act as if it's a plus one sword the problem is all the magic item has is the ability to make you think it's a magic item. It doesn't actually do anything. You are just swinging like a normal sword that makes you think it's magical. And that's its magic. Oh yeah. The cursed item could have the opposite effect. Now, this can form in a couple of different ways. It could mean whatever bonus or ability it would have has the opposite effect for it. If the magic item would target something, it will target the user. The fact is, it is in such a way that the person using it shouldn't recognize that it is having an opposite effect. Not off the bat. They won't notice it until perhaps they've been using it for a while and they're like, why isn't this working? The problem is, as soon as they realize it's a cursed item, they're compulsed to carry it around and keep it with them. So you will start using it thinking it does the right thing. Let's say if it's a magic sword that instead of it being a plus, it's a minus. Well, as soon as you figure out that it's doing something terrible to you, well, then you just can't get rid of it. Your magic item might have intermittent functionality. That's the curse it has. There are actually three types of this. First is unreliable. It will have a 5% chance each time you use the magic item to not function. 5% that it just doesn't do anything. Dependent means the magic item needs to meet certain conditions, which a bunch of example conditions are listed in the book, in order to function. If it doesn't meet those conditions, it doesn't work. And uncontrolled means that every day you have to roll a percentile check from 1 to 5. It activates on its own at some random point during the day, probably when it's most inconvenient for you. Oh yeah uncontrolled. Now some magic cursed items have requirements in order to use them. If these requirements aren't met, it won't function. 
Many sample requirements are listed in the book that you can either use or come up with on your own. And it will be one or more of these that you have to meet in order for the magic item, for the cursed item, to actually function. Requirements for magic item are never random. They are always determined by the item itself. If an intelligent item also happens to be cursed, it will be related to whatever purpose or powers it has. Otherwise, it will directly relate to whatever type of item it has, as it seems to be appropriate determined by you, the GM. It is also important to note that when it has requirements, you must qualify these requirements every day. If you fail to get these requirements, the magic item, the cursed item, does not function. Otherwise, it will function exactly the same as a normal magic item would. So there is an advantage if you can somehow meet these requirements. Hey, I can keep using it. Now, cursed item with a drawback. Functions normally as it usually would. It completely functions as the magic item it should be. It just has some kind of negative drawback that is associated with it that you must take on every time you put it into hand. Traditionally, these cursed items, you have to actually have to hold in hand and using it for the drawback to take effect. If I would not be having it in hand, the drawback would not be affecting me. If I should have to make some kind of save against the drawback, the DC will be 10 plus the item's caster level. Of all the cursed items, the most dangerous are those that basically are opposite of the normal effect they would have to begin with, that they've reversed their own effects. Now, cursed items can be a hazard or trap all on their own. The book lists a number of cursed items, their curses, and the basic form that they take. The thing about cursed items is you could either, once they're identified, sell them as the cursed item they are, or it is possible to sell a cursed item as whatever item it seems to replicate. If it looks like a plus one sword, but it is a cursed item instead, you could sell it as a plus one sword, or you could attempt to sell it as the cursed item, but of course then you're looking to auctions or collectors rather than stores. It's also important to note that if you have a cursed weapon or armor, they can take the form of any weapon or any armor. Let's move on and start talking about artifacts. Powerful legendary magic items that are so potent and powerful, they tend to be the center of many adventures. The fact is, even if the adventure itself does not revolve around the artifact, a key component of the story should always be this artifact. Its power should reflect upon the fact it is so important in here. Another thing about artifacts is they cannot be destroyed by normal means. Every artifact will list a specific procedure that you can use, which is one of the main examples of how you can destroy an artifact. This isn't to say you couldn't find some other possible way. There are a few other exceptions. But normal attacks, no. And this process that is listed tends to be the easiest for you to use. Artifacts can never be purchased and should never be part of a random treasure. The fact is they are fickle things that have almost known life of their own without truly being intelligent. So they might disappear from your possession all over or just kind of fade away. You might lose them somehow. Whatever reason, if you misuse an artifact, you will most likely lose the artifact. Now, minor artifacts happen to be a type of artifact that there isn't, they aren't unique. There is more than one of these minor artifacts. But the process to create these powerful magic items has been lost to mortals. At one time, they were able to create them in good number, though. And hence why minor artifacts have more than one version of each of them. There are more of them. But that's it for today. First off, I finished talking about cursed items. Going over some more of the basics, like identifying them, and going over a general list of the possible kind of effects that the curse will have on you. There are sky's limit for anything you could actually have. There are so many possibilities, but these are just the general ones that you might encounter out there. I then dived into, of course, artifacts by going over the basic of what an artifact is and defining it. I, of course, talked to you about the minor artifacts. In the next episode, I will talk to you about major artifacts and the rest about artifacts, and then we will move on to talking about making your own magic item. Because that's an important one to talk about, because it's a possibility that not only will your player be able to make your own magic item, but your game master will allow you to make your own magic items. 
because you always should ask your game master if it's allowed. But if you have any questions, comments, anything you would say, anything you think I left out, please leave them in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It should support the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon. Link in the description below. There's some great rewards and it helps to grow and improve the channel. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.